I want to find the derivative of f of x times g of x times h of x. So for this, we're going to need the product rule. So what we're going to do is let f of x, g of x be u, h of x be v. So we apply the product rule, it will just be u prime v plus v prime u. So the, let's do this on the side. Let's look at u prime. So for u prime, we want to apply the product rule for f times g. So it's a derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Okay, so we're going to substitute that in for u prime. So we'll have f prime times g plus g prime times f. And then we're going to multiply that by v, which is just h of x, plus the derivative of v, so the derivative of h, we'll just call it h prime, times u, which is f of x times g of x. So this thing will be u prime, this is v, v prime, and this is u. And the last thing we're going to do is going to distribute out the h of x to both f prime g and g prime f. So we're going to have f prime g h and then g prime f h plus h prime f and g. Last thing to notice is we have f, g, and h in all of these. For the first term, only f is being, we're only taking the derivative of f here. So f is the one we're taking the derivative and we're leaving g and h alone. The next one, we're, we're taking g, the derivative of g and leaving f and h alone. And the last one, we're taking the derivative of h and leaving f and g alone. So this is very similar to the product rule for two functions. Because with the product rule, you can only take the derivative of one function at a time. So here, because we have three functions, we're going to need to take three derivatives eventually. So you only take the derivative one at a time. So that's why there's three terms. Let's apply this little shortcut to the next problem. So let's say we have y equals x times cotangent squared x times log x. Okay, this one um, I'm going to rewrite it as cotangent x and then the whole thing squared times log x. This way it's much easier. And uh, the other thing I should do also is this is log base 10x. So I'm going to apply the change of base formula. So just to review, that's just going to be, we're going to, re, we're going to put it base e because that's a natural log. So we're going to do log e of b divided by log e of a, which is another way of saying natural log of b over natural log of a. So in this case, if we apply this formula, we get natural log of x over natural log of b, oh sorry, 10. And natural log of 10 is just a constant. Okay, so now we have my we have three different functions. And now we can apply the derivative. So the way we're going to do this is take the derivative one at a time. So let's take the derivative of x first, which is 1. 
And then we're going to leave the other two functions alone. Now we're going to take the derivative of the second function. So we have to apply the chain rule. So bring out the bring down the exponent, keep the inside the same, subtract one in the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay. And then we're going to multiply it by ln of x over ln of 10. And then finally, the only piece I haven't taken the derivative of is natural log of x divided by natural log of 10. So the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over, t sorry, 1 over x. The 1 over ln of 10 is a, uh, sorry, it's a coefficient, so I could just factor it out. We're going to keep x and cotangent squared alone. So I could just rewrite it like this. Okay. So now I'm going to have cotangent squared x times natural log of x over natural log of 10. So 2 times cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared times natural log of x over natural log of 10 plus, okay, so this one, we have x over x, so those will cancel, and I'm going to have cotangent squared x over natural log of 10, and then the last thing I need to do is simplify by distributing out the negative cosecant squared, and actually I can factor it out. I can factor a couple things out. I have natural log of x over natural log of 10. Or actually, let's try that again. We have a, a factor of natural log 10 in the denominator. And we also have cotangent. So let's pull that out. We have cotangent x divided by natural log of 10. I'm going to have another factor of cotangent and then times natural log. Okay, then it's going to be minus 2 times cosecant squared times natural log x plus another factor of cotangent x. And this is my derivative. So next one, we have f of x equals x squared times 1 minus x cubed times e to the negative x. So for this, we're going to be taking the derivative one at a time. So if I use x squared to be u, 1 minus x cubed to be v, e to the negative x to be w, I'm just going to be, to make it simple, I'm just going to write uvw three times, since that we're using three functions, uv and w. And for every time, we're going to be taking the derivative of one of those functions at a time. So it'd be u prime, then v prime, then w prime. OK, so let's work on that. So this will be f prime of x, and then we'll be adding these terms. So x squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x leave everything else the same. And I like to do the derivative first, so I'm going to do v prime first. This one is going to require the chain rule, so I'm going to bring down the 3, keep the inside the same, subtract 1 in the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, times u, u is x squared, and then v or w, sorry. And then finally we have u, v, w prime. Let's just take the derivative first. That would just be negative e to the negative x times x squared times 1 minus x 
cubed. Let's see what they all have in common. They have an X in common. They also have an E to the negative X in common. Okay, so let's, let's write that down. Um, and then a one minus X squared though, because the candidates are one minus X squared and one minus X cubed. You always pick the one with the smaller exponent. Okay, and then what's left is two times one minus X minus three uh, times X. Okay, and then minus X times one minus X. Okay, I can distribute this out. So I have two minus two X minus three X minus X plus X squared. Okay, and then finally, let's see, we have two is only a constant, and then we have negative two X minus three X minus X is negative six X and then plus X squared. And that's our derivative.